This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. When you sign up for an annual subscription, you'll also get access to Nebula, the only place on the entire internet where you can watch the 40 minute half as interesting special. Okay, look, this is gonna sound controversial to some of you, and I know I don't usually talk about this sort of stuff on this channel, but I've stayed silent about this for far, far too long. It's time that Half as Interesting officially condemns the left and everything that it stands for. Wait, no, 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 I don't mean the political left. My angry cousin who films vlogs from the inside of his pickup truck has that market cornered. No, I mean the left as in, like, literally the direction left. Come on, think about it. What good thing has ever been associated with leftness? Christians have long associated the left with Satanism and eternal damnation, Jews once considered the left to be the side of wicked impulses, Muslims have historically discouraged the use of the left hand for eating, women were accused of witchcraft and burned at the stake in Salem for being left-handed, early criminologists believed that the criminal mind was biologically linked with left-handedness, sexy singles in my area always swipe left when they see my profile on Tinder, and drivers for the United Parcel Service have, since the 1970s, avoided making any left turns unless absolutely necessary. Except, well, that last one isn't about wickedness or witchcraft or the tiny little hat I'm wearing in all my Tinder photos. It's actually just part of a very elaborate mathematical calculation that UPS needs to make every single day. You see, UPS trucks aren't just aimlessly rolling around the country with that Rick and Morty body pillow you ordered. There's a lot that needs to happen before it gets dropped off on your doorstep, hopefully in an unmarked package. First, your package is labeled, scanned, and taken by truck to one of several hundred regional sorting facilities. Then, if you're one of those casuals who only pays for ground shipping for your body pillows, it's loaded on a truck, or if you're a true alpha, it's loaded on a plane, which usually goes to Louisville for the packages to be processed through UPS's centrally located world hub. There, it has a fun little ride on one or two miles of conveyor belts, gets grouped together with other packages destined for similar destinations, and is flown, once again, to a different regional sorting facility, at which point it can be loaded onto a truck for delivery. Now, driving a truck full of Rick and Morty body pillows sounds simple enough. Just step on the gas, stay on the road, and hope that the police don't ask what's in the back of your vehicle. But surprisingly, this final part of the journey is actually the most complicated and most expensive part of the entire shipping process. UPS only needs to account for 267 planes, some of which are only flying one or two short flights per day, but they have an average of 55,000 drivers, all of whom are working around the clock, making 100 to 200 deliveries every single day. That means that one wasted minute per driver per day would cost UPS $14.5 million over the course of a year, not to mention an additional half million dollars in unused gas, and at least a thousand more dollars paying some environmentalist guy to go on the morning news to apologize for wasting that half million dollars on unused gas. The point is, every minute counts, so finding the shortest possible route for each driver is absolutely crucial, except that's not actually as easy as it sounds. This is known as the traveling salesman problem, and much like the meaning of life or what age Paul Rudd is, there is still, to this day, no elegant answer. Given a small amount of points, the traveling salesman problem isn't too hard. You can just try every possible route and compare them, but that becomes harder and harder the more points you add. Say a driver has 120 stops, that means there are this many possible routes. And no, that's not me being excited about there only being 120 routes, that means 120 factorial, which is 120 times 119 times 118 times 117 and so on, which for the record is otherwise known as this number, and this number is otherwise known as way too big to deal with. Then, on top of that number, there are all sorts of other real-world variables that UPS has to account for. Traffic jams, collisions, bad weather, vicious dog attacks, slightly less vicious hamster attacks, the driver being seduced by a sultry enchantress who lures him into her home, poisons him with a glass of 1986 Chateau Lafitte, and makes off with his truck full of Rick and Morty body pillows. In short, there's no way that UPS could calculate perfect routes for all their drivers. They can, however, implement general optimizations that they know will, on average, shave time off of routes. These optimizations include driving with their door open, not stopping to talk to customers, and yes, never turning left. This is for two main reasons. Firstly, left-hand turns almost always take longer than right-hand turns because they necessitate cutting across traffic. This also makes them less fuel efficient, since drivers have to idle while they wait to turn. Secondly, they're also much more dangerous. Left-hand turns are more than three times as likely to kill pedestrians than right-hand turns, and while one guy's body isn't going to slow down a UPS truck too much, the ensuing lawsuit makes this maneuver a little less profitable. 
but cutting down on every unnecessary left turn when planning routes, UPS is able to save 10 million gallons of fuel, emit 20,000 tons less carbon dioxide, and deliver 350,000 more packages every year. Of course, all this doesn't mean UPS trucks don't turn left, as some less renowned news sources report, but they do absolutely avoid it, so maybe. The next time you consider cutting across traffic into a group of pedestrians, you should try taking a tip from our noble boys in brown. Now, if you're trapped in a hospital bed because a reckless driver made a left turn and ran you over, or you're trapped in a normal bed because, well, waking up is hard, you probably have a lot of time on your hands. If I were you, I would spend that time on Nebula, catching up on exclusive, ad-free content from your favorite educational creators, including the very first almost feature-length Half as Interesting Brick special. But before you run off and sign up for Nebula for $30 a year, you might want to consider signing up for CuriosityStream instead. With CuriosityStream, you get a free subscription to Nebula, but you also get access to thousands of documentaries from people like Nick Offerman, Jane Goodall, and Stephen Hawking, and best of all, it's only $15 a year for a limited time. Sign up today at curiositystream.com/hai.